Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm from CRTI. I'm a, I'm a researcher. My name is Huwa Wei, and we would like to welcome all of you. We have um, here our participants, and then when we start the webinar, we also want to introduce you to the panelists, also those who uh, we have also have the, uh, the, the, the special guests will be giving um, in, uh, in the speech. And when we start the open floor session, then uh, when you can uh, also uh, request us to get the microphone by pressing the button request to speak. Right now, you'll be able to watch us and listen to us and hear the presenters from outside to speak is speaking but you can use the messaging to reach out to us if you have comments or questions and because i think i would like to encourage you to also to use the messaging and to communicate with us so that will be very encouraging to our panelists so uh, let me explain a little again um let me introduce me once again my name is Nguwa Win. i'm from we're working as a researcher um and then um, i will be here to uh, we, CST has been working for the socioeconomic uh, the progress of Myanmar and we've been working since the early 2010s and today's webinar is about uh, that uh, you know if investment in social science research uh, and I would like to uh, express our appreciation for all the participants for joining us and also uh, joining us registering us and joining us in today's um, today's webinar. And we'll be uh, presenting uh, the some of the research rate of findings as well as so we will first do the short presentation afterwards. Then, uh, then uh, we will also be talking about uh, that uh, the invest about the, about the social research uh, in Myanmar. And then uh, we have a presenters who present, and we we'll also be giving you an open floor where you'll be able to ask questions and give comments and participate in the discussion. So, like I said before, that um, you uh, that we uh, in the messaging box you can type in any language you prefer, Myanmar or English. And also there is also where you will see at the bottom you have a button. Uh, uh, you will see a uh, request to speech and this button can be used to uh, request permission to speak actually in terms of uh, languages uh, the floor you will see on the on the on the at the bottom floor floor means you'll be able to listen to all of us that you'll be able to listen to us as we speak on the floor and if you choose uh, english then you'll be able to uh, listen to listen to the english in the english language and the same for the myanmar and then you'll be able to listen to the discussion in Myanmar language. So please choose uh, language uh, that you prefer to follow the follow the discussions and uh, and because of the connection, sometimes uh, when you when you switch, I think uh, we might. So so we want you we like to. You can choose and at any time, but we rather you stay in one channel so that not to miss between the switch. So we like to start the discussion now. And then to first we like we will be presenting about our research and uh, we'd like to invite uh, Mr. Francisco Obino to built around a common analytical uh, framework that aims to describe and analyze research systems and their evolution, specifically in developing countries and specifically with regard to social science um, research and social science research capacity. Ultimately, we want to identify levers of change to strengthen social science systems, uh, that is the production the diffusion and the uptake of social sciences. Um, and we want to do that uh, based on the best possible um, evidence. Um, as you know, today we are launching the Myanmar language edition of the Doing Research Assessment Report, um, which was implemented and carried out uh, during the last year and a half through a scientific and funding partnership between GDN, CSD and um, IDRC. 
working on Myanmar with our colleagues at CSD and IDSC, um, as well as a number of academics who supported and, uh, and guided us through this process, has been a fascinating and engaging experience. Um, above all, um, one important thing we've learned is that Myanmar's research system is actually changing uh, very fast. In fact, faster than a report can, can capture. And we are already working on a 2021 update of the report that looks into, into this change uh, and possible entry points for an effective governance structure for research um, in the country. Um, I'd like now to pass, the, I'd like now to pass the floor to um, our um, colleague and partner Ed, Edgar Rodriguez, who's um, a, our close partner um, at the Canada's IDRC, the National Development Research Centre, and he's also the lead of the Knowledge for Democracy Myanmar initiative that supported this exercise. Um, again, um, welcome to you all. Um, Edgar, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, um, Francesco, and good afternoon to everyone. My name is Edgar Rodriguez, and I'm the lead officer for the Knowledge for Democracy Myanmar Initiative, which is co-funded by Canada's International Development Research Center, IDRC, and Global Affairs Canada. Since 2017, our initiative has aimed at supporting research for better public policy in Myanmar. And part of those efforts have been the support of a study that look at how the system uh, supports uh, good social science research in Myanmar. And we found a great partner in working with Global Development Network, GDN, and also our um, the local think tank, CESD Center for Economic and Social Development. So welcome to you all. We have more than 200 participants joining the conversation today, which shows the incredible interest in, in, in inside Myanmar on how to improve Myanmar's knowledge agenda for the years to come. So this is extremely encouraging. We'd like to welcome the National Education Policy Commission's chairman, Dr. Mia Shui. Without his enthusiasm, this would not have been possible. I would like to... Uh, um, to thank um, already our uh, our partners, the Global Development Network, I mean, Francesco, Joao Costa, and all other colleagues that are not uh, present but are connected, supporting the initiative. Um, I already mentioned the local think tank, Center for Economic and Social Development, SOU, NUWA, and all the colleagues uh, at the center also helping out in this, in, this, uh, in this task. Thank you so much to all of them. Um, we have, I would like to thank our distinguished, pa distinguished panelist, uh, Dr. Tin Zoso, former rector from the University of Community Health from Maui, to come and join us. Dr. Tida uh, Shu uh, Sayama, without you, we have not been able to conduct a number of discussions, previous discussions. She is the prorector of Mithila University of Economics. And we also would like to have a warm welcome to uh, one of our advisors at the initiative, Dr. Sho uh, Mo Tun, who is the executive director and founder of Parami Institute. Today, I have the privilege of introducing Professor uh, Dr. Anton Ted, who I first met at the start of our initiative to, uh, three years ago, 20, in 2017. In every, every interaction with our dear Saya, I can say with confidence and humility that he has shown his vast knowledge, great humor, and profound love for Myanmar. And um, this, this is a t the task of introducing him. Is, um, it's easy because uh, Professor Anton Ted is very well known and he needs no introduction in Myanmar wherever we go. Um, anything I can say will be by definition incomplete. His multiple intellectual and professional accomplishments span a great number of institutions, positions, and contributions in Myanmar. But first of all, and foremost, we count him dearly uh, at IDRC as our senior advisor to our Knowledge for Democracy in, in Myanmar initiative that has benefited amply from his advice. Saya has ha held multiple high-level positions outside Myanmar, as many of you know, He's been senior policy advisor at UNICEF in New York, Dhaka, Bangkok, and he's been principal officer of the UN System Staff College in Italy. He's the chairman of the UN Compact Global Compact Network for Myanmar, 
the national contact person for the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development and the area of responsible business conduct. In Myanmar, he has been a former presidential economic advisor, a member of the president's National Economic and Social Advisory Committee, member of the Myanmar Investment Commission, advisor to the Republic of the Union of Myanmar Federation of Chambers of Commerce and Industry. So you can see it's a long list of incredible contributions. Academically, he holds several degrees for the United Kingdom, such as a master's in operation research at the University of Warwick and a PhD in management sciences from the University of Manchester. He's held different academic positions also at the Yangon University of Economics, which is a partner of our Myanmar initiative in Myanmar. Outside Myanmar, Professor Anton Ted has been visiting professor at Payab University in Chiang Mai, Thailand, and an honorary professor at the University of British Columbia in Vancouver, Canada, which, which makes us particularly proud of his connections to UBC and to Canada. Dear Saya, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Eka. Thank you very much for your very kind introductions. And uh, I would like to thank uh, Professor Dr. Lujue, Chairman of NEPC, Dr. Zou, Dr. Tinzo Su, and Dr. Chomutu, as well as other panelists. Minglava, greetings to you all. Good morning and good afternoon. I would like to welcome all the distinguished guests who has uh, joined us from various locations. It is indeed an honor and a privilege to say a few words at this very important occasion. I'm speaking on behalf of the advisory board, which I'm sure many members are also participating. The title of this webinar, Boosting Investment Social Science Research, is in alignment with the vision and mission of K4DM. Knowledge for Democracy MEMA is a joint investment, as Dr. Eggard has mentioned, of Global Affairs Canada and International Development Research Centre, IDRC. It, has start, it started in 2017, and I had the honour and privilege to be associated with this initiative from the very beginning. But very soon, it will be ending next year. The initiative reached almost 30 institutional partners in Myanmar and abroad and has promoted evidence-based research to better develop public policies. The highlights of the K4DM activities are, I just want to highlight a few very important, direct training and mentoring to universities, which includes University of Rangoon University of Economics, Mandalay University, and of parliaments. Uh, we tried our best to develop an internship program in Yangon Parliament, but due to the COVID-19, it has been postponed. We are also supporting think tanks through direct funding. Think tanks like Dr. Zou's uh, outfit, CESD, CDES, and Alarm. And we also do mentoring programs with almost 10 think tanks working with UK-based Kibu International. And finally, we also run competitive research grants on gender and decentralization. The initiative supports greater investment in higher education and knowledge so that people in Myanmar can find our own solutions to our own challenges. This initiative is particularly timely and relevant as a result of the recent elections in November 8th the democratic transition in Myanmar has been further strengthened and consolidated. It therefore provides the needed political space in Myanmar to move forward in the area of social science research. I'm eagerly looking forward to the findings on the Myanmar social science research system to be shared by Dr. So Wu, Executive Director of CESD, and the commentaries to be given by Dr. Tinzo So, Dr. Cho Mutong, and Dr. Tiraju. In this context, I would like to remind all of us of the data, information, knowledge, and wisdom pyramid, whereby 
the transition from data and information generated by research leads to knowledge and wisdom. I would also like to point out something which we have missed. The nexus between the producers of knowledge and the consumers of the research findings. Okay. Consumers in the case of politicians, legislators, government officials, business leaders, and the general public. I hope in the future, before the project ends, there will be equal focus, not just on producers of, non of research, but also equally important, how does the research outputs are used and consumed by the general public? Last week, as all of us know, on 1st December, Rangoon University celebrated its 100 years. It is one of the premier education institutions in the region, and it has demonstrated academic quality and in integrity. Equally important for this occasion is that some of you would remember that in 1910, 10 years before Rangoon University, the Burma Research Society was established. I've been trying to revive the society for several years without success. It was established by Mr. J.S. Furnival, the outstanding social scientist. So I do hope we take into account his contribution as we deliberate the findings of social science research in our country. I would like to end my remarks with a wish. I hope one outcome of this event will be the establishment of Myanmar Social Science Research Council, very much along the lines of Social Science and Humanities Research Council of Canada. In this way, Knowledge for Democracy Myanmar Initiative will leave a lasting legacy in Myanmar long after the project is completed. I thank you for your attention. Mingalaba, greetings to you all. Okay. So I would like to thank um, So currently I would like to invite another speaker from Myanmar National Education Policy I would like to invite Dr. Myo Joy to give an uh, opening speech Uh, and then allow me to speak in our language, please. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Ngo. And Dr. Autun Ted, Dr. Sindo Zhu, and Ujo Motun. I would like to express my uh, deepest uh, appreciation for inviting me. So first of all, I would like to invite, uh, this is the first time for me joining this session. So I joined this session and what I found out of this session is that you know, when I listen to Dr. Ngo Win and Dr. Zou, when we look at the university sectors, in the government sector, uh, the, there's a low uh, lack of participation and low participation from the government side. That's why in the university side, I think to inform to the government sector that well, please also inviting us. That's why we're because of my request. This is the second time they allow us to join. In that one uh, research paper launch around the world, the U.S. is the uh, top one country in the R&D and research and development. So in a $581 billion has been invested for the research project. And secondly, followed by China, $519 US billion. And Japan, India, Korea are following a loading accordingly. So when we look at the ASEAN country, Singapore is the, the top country in the ASEAN. 
So when we look at rather than their income, their gross uh, GDP is 2.17 percent of their GDP has been allocated for research. And secondly, uh, Malaysia has been following as a second place to about 2.4 percent of their GDP. So when you look at Republic Korea, use of 4.6 of their GDP for the uh, invest, uh, research investment for our country in terms of GDP, when we calculate it, it's still very low. 0 0.03 is very low in investment in the research sector. That's why we need to increase our budget. On the other hand, you know, when we look at the report of CESD, in that report, uh, regarding with the GERD, it's our RNDB, when we look at our, the expenses, when we allocate our expenses, and 30% for science technology, and 326 for agriculture science, and for medical science for 30, and for uh, zero, so for social science, 0.08% is still very low. When you look at all these issues, and, and why agriculture and medical science need more budget than others, when we look at the, the Department of Agriculture and Research and Department of Medical Research, maybe they got more budget because of those research activity. So when we look at the Department of Research and Innovation of the U.S. University, they are focusing on research and science. So when we look at the agriculture research from the social science, when we look at the university, social science budget is very low and still we need to redefine the definitions of the social science. So even if we are producing uh, a grad graduate students compared to the, the, the war, the social science in our country, by the study of 2016 of the World Bank data, uh, socialism in journalism and information program for social science, when 100 people graduate, there are only 0.1% are study on social science, where Bangladesh has been 25% of the graduate total or graduate and Korea, Laos 1.8, Malaysian is 3.8 uh, graduated with a social science and business and uh, administration and law. When we look at their 11 point starting percent, the other countries are already 20, 30 percent. So in this social science sector, so we need to redefine so uh, we did, uh, I look around and there's an anthropology concept, political science and uh, international laws and others. So when, whether we can combine all those days and when we look at categorize, we have uh, social science and uh, including education and uh, economic, all their three universities, they are combined and confused. And, and what about the economics? They are less graduated with the economic degree. So that's why when we're going to do social science, we have to join the Manley and Yango University about the anthropology department. So I'm from the agriculture background. So the rural development are very few and social study very few. So in agriculture and economic is only available, that subject only available in the Yesin University of Agriculture. When I talk with the Philippines, they don't reach and uh, there's no rural development, there's no research on these sectors. We need to reshaping our ways of thinking to allocate how we are going to allocate our human resource development. For that, we need a policy. Uh, we need a good policy to reallocate our human resources based on the decision of this webinar, how to what extent we are going to expand our social science sector and to be able to establish a social science research center. For example, like some university has their own research center, but, uh, but mostly there's the biological and natural science but for the social science research sector, so like uh, private sector like Daudazou, for the higher institutes, and we are also encouraging them to balance the social science with along with the other studies and subject matters to enhance the social science and to highlight the economic growth of the country from the from the end of social uh, science. Thank you. Thank you so much for Sian Yo Joy for your speech and for your discussion points. Research is so we also found uh, similar uh, findings in our research as well, and, and we need to re-identify uh, the definition of social science based on Yama context. For now.
in order to present the findings of our research, I would like to invite Dr. Zhou. Why Dr. Zhou is still sharing his screen? Let me introduce Dr. Zhou while he was studying this creature. So we'll be sharing with you about doing research in Myanmar, which is a research we have carried out and this project. Dr. Zhou is the executive director of uh, that does ESD and Sia. If you are ready, please uh, you have the you you have the floor, Sia. Thank you. Let me start with the screen share. So while we are, Swaisia yeah, is setting up the screen share, uh, that uh, I would like to also make an announcement, a short announcement, uh, that uh, Knowledge for Democracy will be, uh, will, have, will be supporting us for a, a new re the, a research program. Uh, so we'll be doing a launch uh, um, on the Friday, uh, Friday, and we'll be, uh, please, uh, I will, will be sending you the, the registration link in the messaging box. So please, uh, use the link to register for our report launch. Yeah. Sorry, Sia, you have the floor now. Express our deep appreciation to, uh, IDRC and also the GDN for generous support to make this, uh, research possible. Um, uh, Ergert and uh, uh, Francesco, please allow me to speak in uh, Myanmar language. So thank you for understanding. Lisa uh, Abado, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that to uh, the Umujue, uh, Chairman of the National Education Committee, Professor Dr. Antonte, and uh, professors and rectors from various institutes, universities, and fellow researchers, uh, that uh, I will I'll be sharing with you um, the paper doing research in Myanmar. And I'm very honored to have the privilege to be able to present to you about this, uh, about the research that we have undertaken, especially Professor Dr. Antonte. It's a person, and after the, his in the in his also keynote speech, he talked about the Burma's Research Society. It's a very important heritage, and I will be. I have or even used uh, that uh, the logo of the Burma Research, Research Society because it is a uh, very much uh, important. As in uh, as CIG has uh, Dr. Antoine has mentioned in this uh, in his remarks that uh, research started back in the 1930s, and now we need to we are trying to revive and rejuvenate uh, research in Myanmar and that with your guidance we also will also try our uh, best to uh, try our heart uh, to be to do really hard to be able to re-establish research and development in Myanmar and as uh, professor has mentioned professor uh, has mentioned that some of the findings that we have is quite relevant to the points we have mentioned about research and social science uh, social studies in Myanmar so especially for for the academic uh, for the academy year, like uh, we have professors and rectors from the from the institutes and universities you didn't get a chance to able to share so we are trying to share as much so Thank you very much for joining hands. I guess I, here I also I also like to um, to uh, apologize because uh, so I am when it comes to research uh, that uh, I did research uh, very uh, that uh, I did research when I was a student. Uh, so I would like to uh, re I haven't really walked deeply in higher education research. So my research uh, might not be very academic, or there are any shortcomings in the research. It's my um is it's, it's all also, it's also because of, it's not because of the uh, my uh, those uh, that my research team is also might be because of me who didn't have a higher level kind of education kind of research background experience as you obviously do. So I would like to share with you about this research that uh, this research uh, we have worked with uh, four countries: uh, with Bolivia, Nigeria, Indonesia, and. Um, 
and also uh, Myanmar. So uh, the, the, so there were there were more other countries. Uh, there were there were more countries in the second phase, but in the first phase we worked together with this country because we're looking at how important research system in different countries. We're looking at the other countries too, and then because research is important, so we also look at it like look at it at other countries, and it's a great learning experience for Myanmar to be able to look at them and look at the system to be able to learn the good practices from other countries as well so the in terms of methodology so we do uh, we do the user called G G so GDN's framework called, called doing research assessment so in terms of uh, that uh, we look at the we look at the, not only the output we also look, also look at the use how the outcomes have been used in the, the, the so we look at the production diffusion as well as the uptake by the policy makers so like uh, Professor Alton that said there is a gap between those who produce the research and those who consume or use the research is very true. There is a gap in data uh, that when we look at the research, social research system as a whole, then we, uh, when we evaluate it, there's been much more in terms of production, but in terms of uptake, in terms of uh, application in policy, there are there is indeed gap, and that is something we have uh, noticed, and it was reflected earlier by uh, Professor Mutre when he was looking at the research and the and the uh, and the application in in uh, on the ground. I will be presenting in two parts. Firstly, I'll be presenting the context or the background of the research. And then I will also talk about the findings of the research. As you all know, our Myanmar education system is going through reform with the National Education Strategy Plan 2016-2021. Their research has been given a, given a priority under the NESP, especially for higher education in Myanmar. When we look at it with the international ranking and that uh, universities uh, need to research, that was also part of the push for it. But however, research system as a whole is more important than an international like uh, ranking there are also other areas we will need to develop for the to have a to have a uh, like a dynamic research system in addition in the NESP it was also clearly mentioned how to how to uh, improve research and development in the NESP these are the important policy pronouncements however in t although in terms of uh, in terms of uh, training, there has been uh, some progress, but like Dr. Mitra has said earlier, when it comes to research, in terms of investment and budget allocation is very weak in Myanmar. So, and that uh, in and some of the findings are also uh, very much uh, or not uh, that is a very not based, it's not merit based, but it's more like uh, based uh, to the cost effective solutions. So it's not really, it's um, not really is uh, contributed much in terms of uh, policy, um, the policy accommodate policy consideration for to improve research uh, system. So these are the some of the public funds allocation under the um, Ministry of Education budget, and that Professor uh, Mutual mentioned in addition to the G GDP. But if we look at the ministries, uh, higher education in Myanmar has seventy percent of the total education budget in Myanmar. So the higher education, 70%. But uh, if you look at basic education, it has a uh, 77%. But out of the 77%, only a certain amount is allocated for the budget. And sometimes you have to go through the, it has to be done by the monitoring evaluation and many research. And so if you look at the, the research um, that um, will say that it's, very small that the amount is uh, is a uh, very uh, limited for an education budget so although there has been more budget allocated in the education sector what really goes into research is still very limited and so we also look at the cap research capacity of uh, the researchers that uh, so, so sometimes you must still have a high to uh, it's a very low student to teacher ratio as well as uh, when it comes to higher education. Often that uh, we have a lot of uh, students from the distance university, so that that us as a lot, lot of uh, teach, students, teacher, teachers from the arts and science university are very much uh, overwhelmed by their their, their distance education classes, so they cannot dedicate a lot of their time for research. 
Another point we have um, we like to talk about is uh, looking at the looking at Myanmar context and uh, even the remote universities, uh, remote universities, even under the COVID nineteen because of the COVID nineteen, despite the pandemic, there there is a bit more. Uh, they were able to join in with the with the, using their virtual platform. So we can consider is that advantage of the of the COVID nineteen pandemic because most of the distant university, rural university, were able to join in. But however. There's still a lot of need for research and development in remote um, um, education um, institutions. Like uh, mostly, uh, research is going well in Jiangou and Mandalay, the biggest cities, but it's quite weak in other states and regions. So that inequality also is uh, also an important issue in uh, when we talk about higher, higher education inf institutions. Um, and that the, another um, imbalance or issue is that in higher education that we see that that we have a higher number of women um, teaching in uh, high, higher education institutions. That I think is also when you look at it from the if you look at the freshmen, sixty one percent are female, and the more female postgraduates, and of course more female are also teaching in higher education institutions. So they are like eighty percent right now of the teaching staff in Myanmar. I I think is Myanmar is the only country we had that level of uh, women uh, only women teaching uh, in a higher education institution and another part of uh, imbalance um, higher education infrastructure is in terms of it's a population ratio according to our research uh, you know, you know, very economically developed areas. Uh, we don't have as much. Uh, you know, have as many universities, and that, however, in some in some areas, the economy is not very developed. But then you have uh, a high number of uh, like uh, universities. So that also the the ratio of population ratio of uh, population and university is also a is also a challenge to access to higher education. We now see a lot of uh, a lot of uh, papers, a lot of research publications. Uh, we have seen this is good news for us. It's a good sign for Myanmar. However, and we look at it that that um, is if we look compared to other countries, uh, compared to other countries, and then uh, you know, so when we look at the, some of the indicators, like for example, like we look at the Scopus or the SCI Margo. If we look at the journal like Country Rank and the, and the, and the Scopus for the the citation database when you look at about Myanmar. So from we look at from the 2016 to 2019 for the period of three years, when you look at in Scopus, we realized that um, the, with the, there are about 460 publications uh, with a keyword of Myanmar. However, there was only 26% uh, publications from Myanmar affiliation. Most of these um, publications are from non-Myanmar affiliation. Um, the, so that means from the researchers, which are not, uh, which are, which are there either there from the other institutions other than that of Myanmar. So the and, and to the right you have the list the top Myanmar institutions contributing to the peer review journals. University of Yanko has the highest number. So that the, the we say Yangon University is a very productive university. In part two, I'll be looking at the uh, DRA framework. DRA is the GDM uh, issued uh, framework. Uh, looking at uh, uh, and would, would include uh, surveys on researchers, research administrators, and policy makers. Uh, that we also look at uh, that uh, some of the. Uh, uh, some of the senior officials who are from the government agency. So these are the find the findings are uh, uh, compiled in three parts. Uh, firstly, we are looking at the production. When you say production, there are challenges in higher education institutions. Uh, often, say we talk about the teachers, human resources, and that uh, this, the teachers and academia are the civil servants. So they have to work according to the civil service rules and regulations. So due to these civil service requirements, and they have a lot of duties, and there are a lot of rules and regulations and administrative uh, requirements. So and there are also high restrictions uh, and uh, expectations when it can do research. 
That's the first issue. They are also they also have to they cannot stay in one place and they have to rotate and serve in different universities. So they'll be moving every uh, two three years. So they cannot do long term research. Is also an issue uh, for the for the for most of the academic um, the academia. Like Professor Altonta has mentioned that uh, National Social Science Research Council or the National Research Council is an institution that is absent not just for social science for any any material any and uh, for any subject we don't have such a research council as a national body so it is very much to provide regulatory framework or the or the supervision for the for the for the area of research another is we are also difficult uh, access to official database and formal academic resources and peer review is also very limited that um uh, that uh, you know, peer review is very important to work among the researchers to be able to ensure uh, to improve uh, research quality by providing quality feedback. And we don't have that uh, systematically. Often, the heads of the departments will be or the faculty members will read and say will provide the informal form of feedback. They don't really have a, like a systematic uh, way of it. It's not managed by the department, but not by the faculty. So there, there's a kind of evaluation mechanism, and uh, that uh, feedback is also also important and most researchers we have interviewed have uh, that is uh, like appreciate that a lot of capacity building and capacity building is important and useful for them and uh, we ask uh, our questions to uh, that um, uh, to the to the not only to the teachers in the higher education, we also ask them non-academic sector, especially NGOs, LNGOs, civil society organizations, and private research institute, as well as other research companies. We ask these questions, and when we ask the non-academic researchers, uh, they have they 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 in their they are often have uh, talk about uh, that the. the that uh, the the research they do very much depends on the donors, and that uh, that um, some of the research. Uh, there are they're doing a lot of research, but there is a lot of production. But in terms of uptake, and they are quite doubtful about the the use and the consumption, and that uh, well, that do they really reflect the the researchers, researchers the context of research sector in Myanmar? So there's some of the feedback we have received. That in addition, that. Uh, that often these research are very much based on the project. So it's a project-based engagement. So at the end of the project, often there is a difficult to sustain or contain new organ or like that. Another part I would like to mention is diffusion. That uh, there is no critical mass kind of diffusion and using the, the traditional media channels. And that also often uh, research, there are research in politics, and that uh, that there's a way research in politics and there's research economics and nobody is really working on political economics research. So we try to that, uh, that we don't we don't have a multidisciplinary research where political science department and economics department work together with research. So it is difficult. Even within the same department, the different academics will be doing research, but there is no inter interdisciplinary uh, collaboration. And then again. That uh, there is also a very also limited outreach to the general public on their research finding, but most researchers do mention that with more partnership, with more collaboration, with Indonesian research partnerships are successful in Myanmar. So this is my last part of uh, the last part of my presentation. I think uh, the most important part is uptake or the once we have pro produced the research, then how much of it has been uh, there's been uptake from the policy makers, from the from the decision makers. That uh, what we have seen is that uh, in uh, when we look at the policy management. Little that um, the evidence based um, evidence based kind of policy making uh, that uh, there is more like a public opinion or the popular opinion seems to be taking precedence in terms of policy discussion and policy. So we seem to have this kind of a populist um, kind of uh, policy making and that even if there is no evidence to support it because of a lot of opinion uh, and pushing for it that can be can very well reflected it. This also is because of the issues of limited resources, intense of research division and personnel that also research funding is limited and research in terms of human resource, research personnel is also quite limited. And 
there, since we have a lot of external funding assistance for research, so most of the research are uh, related to the those uh, related areas. So we, it's not. Uh, and it's often a, it's weak in terms of research that we, the local uh, communities or local researchers, feel that should be studied. So in terms of uh, that uh, policy making and policy division, there is weakness in terms of application of the researchers and findings. So this is the, um, the these are the, some of the findings from our 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 research. So that uh, there are also limitations in our research, and we will not claim our research to be comprehensive. We have only about hundred respondents, and that uh, we're only able to uh, conduct like about thirty um, interviews. So there are limitations, and I would also like to request all of you to feel free to uh, give us feedback. So the last part I would like to uh, share with you is that uh, to improve a research system in Myanmar, we, there is a way forward. And um, the key is to empower higher education institutions and the, the high edu and academic researchers because higher education is already a very well educated sector and there is a great output and productivity and yet we have a little production uh, that is something we need to work on through their policy as well as on the guidance the budget allocation is also important secondly in Myanmar, we need a national research body. We need an entity that will that will oversee, coordinate, and support research initiatives like we had in, in Myanmar Myanmar Research Society in 1910. We used to have that long, long before, but now we don't have such a body. It's a weakness to uh, for the research system in Myanmar. And it is also important to have a systematic evaluation mechanism to improve the quality of research. We need a lot more processes like that, for especially for the higher education institutions. Another point I would like to add, an important point, is that it is uh, that uh, there is research, uh, the donor-funded research projects, are, are, uh, that there are a lot, we are seeing a lot of uh, foreign researchers as well as other foreign experts are working, in, but there should be space for local researchers to look at research uh, did you grow. So for that, I would like to appreciate, express my appreciation to IDRC and GDN. It has been an honor to work with you as a local researcher and local researcher organization and we hope that other organizations will be able to follow our uh, footsteps and that um, following our footsteps so this um, that we have already uh, translated into Burmese language and we'll be posting it very soon on our website so feel free to reach out to us and then uh, you can also uh, you can also reach out to us to get a copy of our research. Thank you, thank you so much for Dr. Zhou for your comprehensive presentation of the findings of the report. I think the, we have already, we are still translating and preparing the Myanmar version of this paper and it will be coming out within a couple of days. So in a basic box, you will see CSD Facebook link. You can also get access through Facebook link and you can also uh, see the website links of our organization as well. So the finding presented by Dr. Zou is the research